last topic of chapter 12, a constrained resource. And to get an idea of what this may look like in, uh, in practice, imagine that this is our, uh, our factory here and we have capacity of 0% right up to 100% capacity. And we have different processes. And as, uh, as our product heads through the, uh, the uh, processes, we might find that process D suddenly we're at full capacity in process D. Which means we can't send, even though we have big chunks of unused capacity in different processes, uh, unfortunately D is what we would call our bottleneck. Process D says the most we can get through is what D will allow. Because to get more through we have to increase D. Uh, again, uh, just because you hit full capacity on one process doesn't mean your factory is running at 100% capacity. You've still got unused capacity in a, new, in, in a number of places, but unfortunately we have no extra capacity here. We've hit peak capacity. So what do we do? If we have multiple products, what do we do? The, the uh, motivation um, sometimes tends to be to focus on the one that provides the highest possible profit. But let me show you with an example I'm sure you're all quite familiar with of a bar. You go to a club and you might go to a club that serves nice little fancy drinks or you might go to a club that pours beer and wine. And let's say that instead of going to the club you happen to be one of the owners of the club. Well, you can sell these nice $10 drinks, and they got 70% margin. Every one you sell, you're going to make 7 bucks, and you're selling them for 10 bucks. Or you can pour beer and wine, uh, and you can only get 5 bucks for that, and only 40% margin. People aren't going to pay a lot for, uh, for a beer. It doesn't look fancy enough. It doesn't have a lot of colors. 5 bucks at 40% margin. But it takes 30 seconds to pour. So our bartender is our bottleneck. We just can't get enough bartenders and uh, we can only sell what the bartender can make. So we're going to assume the bartender is busy every minute that, uh, that they're on. If they're selling the $10 drinks, they take three minutes to make. The bartender can make out of 60 minutes divided by three can make 20 of those drinks at $10. Uh, sorry, $10. Um, the bartender can generate $200 in sales at a 70% margin, which means $140 in contribution margin per hour by selling these uh, fancy frou-frou drinks. Or the bartender could show up in jeans and a t-shirt and pour beer and wine. And they take 30 seconds to pour. So in a minute, how many 30 second intervals do we have? We have 120 of them. And we can sell them at $5 each which means this bartender can generate $600 an hour in sales, but those sales only gather 40% margin. This bartender can generate $240 per hour in contribution margin. If you were the owner of the bar, what would you be telling your bartender to do? Uh, you'd turn your bar into a beer and wine bar, and you'd say, you know, those fancy drinks, uh, there's just uh, they just take too long to make. So, how can we decide what we want to do? We don't want to go through this long process every single time. We can use something called the profitability index. And this is really just a division of two things. Our contribution margin per unit divided by how much time it takes of the constrained unit, the bartender's time, per unit. Let's see if we end up with the same or different costs when we do that. Our contribution margin per unit here, if it's 70% margin, we're going to make $7 uh, uh, per unit. But it's going to take three minutes to make. So we have $2.33 of contribution margin per minute. That's what the bartender can generate. On the less fancy drinks, but uh, the more down-to-earth drink, the ones with people with character will drink, our contribution margin per unit is only $2. We have $5 at 4%, so it's only $2 per drink, not 7 But it takes half a minute to make, 30 seconds to make. 
So if we multiply that out, we find that the bartender can generate $4 in contribution margin per minute. And this is $2.33 per minute. Since it's contribution margin that we're more concerned with, fixed costs will tend to be the same no matter what you do, whether you serve the fancy drinks or whether you serve the beer and wine drinks. Uh, you still got to turn the lights on. You still got to uh, uh, have tables and chairs and, and, and nuance and, and, and atmosphere and all that depreciates. Uh, what would you have your bartender do? Generate $4 per minute in contribution margin or $2.33? So you see, at first glance, you might say, well, look at this. It sells for 10 bucks, 70 point margins. I mean, that's huge. Let's make these. Let's sell those. And you can look at this one and say, well, you can only get five bucks for them, and it's only 40 point margins. We've got to sell a lot of these just to make up for a couple of these. But if that's our constraint, what would you have them do? So you can see how the constraint uh, uh, leads to a different type of analysis about where you want to place your, uh, uh, your focus on. You have to start thinking about maximizing profit in relation to the constraint. Not maximizing profit overall, but in relation to the constraint. If you do that, you'll maximize profit overall.